Welcome to the Philip and Muriel Berman Museum of Art at Ursinus College. I'm Lisa Tremper Hanover. I'm the Interim Director of Operations and I was the Founding Director of the Berman Museum in 1987. I was here through 2012. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the exhibition Francoise Gillot, Her Journey Through Portraiture, a wonderful installation drawn from the permanent collection. What we'd like to do today is give you a tour of the objects that are on view and to give you a little bit of insight into who Francoise Gillot was as an artist and the people with whom she surrounded herself. So we're starting with a portrait of Muriel Berman. This is a study. Philip and Muriel Berman collected Francoise's work starting in the 1950s. They became good friends with her and really were a part of her artistic journey. As a thank you to the Bermans, Francoise decided to do a portrait of Muriel and did several studies. So Portrait of a Lady in Purple is Muriel Berman. And you can see right off the bat that Francoise is all about color. You have these bold purples and just beautiful structured lines. This led to an entire series of studies, all of which are in the permanent collection of the Berman Museum of Art. And this is the final product. As you can see, the final product is warm and luscious and oranges. And you see the hints of purple. You can see that the floral arrangement is a major feature. Flowers were very much part of Francoise's iconography. This was a study for this bouquet. And this ended up being a leap motive that was included in several of Francoise's paintings and lithographs. We have a version of this in our complete oeuvre of lithographs in our permanent collection. This study also is much more evocative of the final portrait but you can see how Francoise, using different mediums, gouache, watercolor, oil, acrylic, on paper, on canvas, on board, is able to capture a personality. These images are not really smiling. There is a bit of a mystery to her subjects, but Muriel, in particular, has a bearing of elegance, and Francoise really captures that. Of course, this was done in the early 70s, and so the clothing is also very evocative of the era. Very patterned and flowy and elegant in its own way. This background of Muriel is at their home. Muriel and Philip lived in Allentown, Pennsylvania, in a very modern home, unusual for the time. It was built that way to be able to showcase their massive art collection. And so these screens behind Muriel were part of the foundation of how they exhibited their work. This trio of portraits by Francoise Gillot is very evocative of a very specific time in her artistic history. They are done in pencil and in ink. André Rajda was a mentor to Francoise. He was a Hungarian surrealist artist. Her path crossed with him in Paris this was in the 1940s, war was imminent, and yet she really was taken by his ability to bring in different symbols that are indicative of what the time was in Paris, and he truly was a great mentor. She did this very beautiful linear study of Andre in 1944-45. So the Nazis were just about to invade Paris at this time. He returned to Hungary. Paul Eluard was a poet. Francoise illustrated a book of his poems and they too forged a bond. When Francoise met Pablo Picasso in 1943, she was introduced to a circle in the School of Paris that went on to truly become a defining part of art history. She met George Brock, she met Henri Matisse, she met the poets and theatrical figures of the time. And this heavily influenced her approach to composition, her approach to content, her approach to color. 
Paul Eluard, as you can see, almost has a cubist approach to this very simple, elegant ink portrait. Self-portrait moody is indicative of the title. This too was done in 1943. Her outfit with the turtleneck indicates that it is winter. While she had met Pablo, they had an on and off relationship early on. She did not move in with him until 1946. So once again, she is reflective. It is indicative of a specific time in history, World War II, the Paris invasion. And she, you can see that she's a very young woman. This intimate gallery includes images of all the most important people in Francoise's life, including herself. We have two self-portraits, a portrait of Pablo Picasso, a portrait of Jonas Salk, and portraits of her children, Paloma and Claude. This is Francoise's very first self-portrait, done in 1939. It is the first time she worked with oil on paper and it is the number one work in the archives. So it's a very important piece. We were so fortunate that in the late 2000s, Francoise decided to make a major gift of portraits to the Berman Museum of Art in honor of our expansion, which is the Pfeiffer Wing. We have a works on paper study room that is very robust, and Francoise wanted to add to the numerous gifts she had already made for us. So over 45 portraits were gifted of literary figures, of artistic figures, of her family members, of her most intimate self-portraits, and this was one of them. You will also see that she works very dynamically with pastel. This is a very evocative portrait of Paloma and Claude Picasso, her children with Pablo. This was done in 1953, so they are older. They're still six or seven or eight years old, but you'll see how she divides her composition, uses bold background, but it is the figures, it is the people that define this composition. This is called Claude and Paloma in a sad mood, kind of evocative of her self-portrait in a sad mood. In 1952, Francoise did a series of six self-portraits in crayon. This was her first one, featuring a beautiful sun hat, evidence of a garden, and her sketchbook. This was the first one accomplished, and according to her curator, the best one. You can see that her linear approach transcends whatever influence Pablo Picasso might have had. In fact, she is known to take one line and complete the entire composition without lifting her pencil. Pablo, the lock of hair, was her first portrait of this artist. Once again, um, it's a very strong interpretation of a very strong figure. Pablo was 40 years Francoise's senior, and they were together 10 years. There was a certain dynamic, a, a certain frisson that they brought to each other that really boosted each other's creative tendencies. Picasso was known to be very superstitious. And so whenever he cut his hair or his fingernails, he kept them. And so this particular portrait was done just before he cut his hair. And so she's capturing, again, a particular moment you can see how intense the eyes are. Again, there's these just beautiful spare lines that give you the essence of the personality. This pastel portrait of her third husband, Jonas Salk, the polio vaccine pioneer, is very reflective of a scientist who is thoughtful, who is serious, who is meditative, and that is evidenced in this particular composition. She did several portraits of Jonas, but no paintings. They were all done in pastel, a very fragile medium, and Francoise wanted those to be in museum collections. Once again, you are able to feel the personality, feel the presence 
of this figure, much like the Pablo Picasso portrait. We were fortunate that when we had the premiere of Stone Echoes, a catalog raisonné, which was our retrospective of every lithograph Francoise created over the arc of her career, that Claude Picasso, Paloma Picasso, and Jonas Salk were all present at the grand opening. It was a great surprise to Francoise. It was the last time this particular family was all together because Jonas suddenly passed away three months later. This lithograph entitled Diane, done in 1970 and printed at the Morleau Press in Paris, is a fine example of her ability to layer color and produce prints that many artists said could not be done. She pushed the medium. The press, Jacques Merlot, worked with her to achieve these kinds of results. This particular lithograph is only five colors, but the way she has layered it brings forward these rich blues and these wonderful yellows. You might note these little square elements in the composition. Francoise took an India ink bottle, placed it either in ink or on the surface of the stone and created that particular compositional effect. You will see it in several of her lithographs. It's particularly prominent here because it covers her face, it covers her hair, it covers the background. Diane was one of the characters in A Midsummer's Night Dream. Once again, working with Merlot, where she started in 1950, gave her the kind of freedom to experiment. When we did our Stone Echoes exhibition, she created her last lithographs at Merlot. This was in 1995, and she has not produced any lithographs since. This wonderful drawing of Paloma with a spoon and Claude has a really dynamic linear quality with just a touch of crayon to give it some verve. This was in 1950s. She did a lot of compositions of the children. They brought her great joy. Her relationship with Pablo, while tumultuous, was also very caring. He loved these children. At the time, however, he had started an affair with Genevieve, a person who was part of the group of people that would come to the studio. So Francoise was also a friend of Genevieve's, as evidenced in this composition, which is entitled Zelma, which is named after a very famous author in Paris. Zelma means shalom which is peace. This is subtitled Francoise and Genevieve. Francoise being the figure on the left, Genevieve the very dramatic image on the right. Zolma is listed on this particular book to give you a point of reference. Francoise too sustained and maintained a relationship with Genevieve, even though Pablo and Genevieve were also a couple. You can imagine the intrigue and the explosiveness of this relationship that once again results in very dynamic compositions and content. Francoise's daughter, Aurelia, from her second husband, artist Luc Simone, was also a frequent subject of her portraits. This was done in 1959. Again, you see just a very poignant visage, isolated in a way, and you see how she embraces herself. This is a very simple ink and wash portrait that was also turned into a lithograph. We are pleased to have both this portrait, the original, and the lithograph in our collection. Untitled was a series of drawings turned into monotypes that would accompany very special volumes that would be created. This was created in particular for the monograph, which was a volume published in 2000 that was a comprehensive look at Francoise's oils over the arc of her career. 
you can see that the composition has a mask-like quality. And Francoise approached some of her subjects, including herself, with this kind of facade, a mask-like facade. It's very cubist in its orientation, yet this was done in 1999. In person, this has a particular glow to it because of the medium that she uses. There is some pastel, there is some elements of silver, there's a beautiful charcoal quality to the line. You'll also notice that her signature has changed over the years. She started with a very simple chop, then she would go to just F. Gillot, and then the much more dramatic Francois Gillot spelled out. Many of her oils have a circular chop as well, but each one is a distinctive identity for this very important 20th century artist.